Yo, what's going on, guys? Got Alex here. We're, we're gonna go over our opinions on the market and a, and a little bit more. So, what's going on, Alex? How are we doing today? Doing amazing, man. Woke up. I feel amazing. Um, you know, it's beautiful outside. Got a little workout in. Uh, looked at the markets. The markets looking a little down, but you know, I want to I want to talk about a, of what I'm thinking because even laying out the worst case scenario of Bitcoin and crypto, it doesn't really look that bad. If anything, it looks like pretty lucrative. So I'll kind of give my story about like how I made like millions of dollars last cycle and and how that's like potentially coming up right now. But yeah, um, yeah. What's up, man? How are you doing? It's going great, man. It finally it's starting to warm up. We had uh, some 40s like what like weather around here. Um, it's going good though. Yeah, the market. Um, we had the nice bear, like the bearish engulfing for the monthly right now. So we'll see. Uh, like what happens. I do agree. It could end up being a great buying opportunity. Could potentially um, come our way. So what's your thoughts then? Yeah. So uh, I think it's pretty obvious. Like uh, last bear run, it wasn't this obvious. Uh, it was it was pretty random actually. Well, uh, when I like remember 2017, it was actually like really bullish all the way down. Um, but I think this time it's really obvious that the Federal Reserve has this really strong um, control over everything. So, you know, if, I don't know if your viewers know anything about uh, macro or whatever, but basically the Federal Reserve uh, controls the printing and non-printing of the dollar uh, in layman's terms. And, and there's two terms you should know. Um, there's hawkish Fed policy and there's dovish Fed policy. So when it's dovish, this is what we saw in 2020 with, you know, all this quantitative easing and the money printer going crazy um, and, and then just, you know, killing inflation. That's what we saw in 2020. Um, but in recent history, they flipped hawkish. And the reason why they flipped hawkish, which is the exact opposite, lowering spending, is because inflation got a little bit out of hand. Right. The CPI came in at 8.5 percent. People are freaking out. Um, so they're like, hey, let, let's let's stop printing money. That's basically what they said uh, in the past couple of months. Now, crypto, um, personally, everyone's calling it a risk on asset. Everybody's saying, hey, it's a risky asset. I agree with this in the short term, but I do agree that it was created um, to get away from everything, basically. So everything's dumping is what I'm saying. When they flipped hawkish, when the Federal Reserve was like, hey, like, let's decrease spending everything's dumping. I mean, if you guys go look at Netflix, you go look at Facebook, you don't, don't look at Disney. It's kind of scary, but like in general stocks are going to zero. It look, that's what it really looks like right now. Um, so it's not just Bitcoin and crypto. It's pretty much everything like a, across the world. And then, yeah, of course, you know, people are going to think of crypto the same way they think of stocks. And, you know, I do think that people are to some way, shape or form are taking profits right now. Um, so yeah, you know, you looked at it as a bearish engulfing. I'm looking at it like, hey, the world's pivoting in a different way. Um, and you know, people are not getting risky right now. They're kind of defensive mode. They're kind of like consolidating, taking profits, you know, savings, making sure that they got food on the table for the next two years, you know, things like this, deleveraging, right? Deleveraging in the housing market. We see equities going down. We see all of that happening, right? So yeah, I just think that people are conservative right now. They're not going to get crazy and start buying, you know, 100 thousand x nfts like i just don't see it happening right now at least yeah. specifically you know what i mean oh yeah 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 and and the dxi just, dxy just keeps going up to it just uh and thought it might be a triple top but i don't know it might keep going uh, yeah we'll so I, I actually thought that it was going to come down too so actually uh let me screen share so i can show you guys what i'm thinking specifically um i put this on my twitter uh but let me just just show you guys so if you come over here i mean yeah so i get what you're saying like it, it that's what i thought at first if you're looking at the daily you know the dxy like it could triple top come back down if that does come back down you know that's really good for bitcoin i'm gonna be honest with you if this comes down really good for bitcoin but you know guys like i i'm uh you know i i do it all the time i look too short term but if you just kind of zoom out man like that looks kind of devastating, right? So like, if you zoom out, you look at the weekly, right? Since 2008, which is specifically the housing market crash, right? So, you know, that's America asserting their dominance, right? They're, they're just throwing, throwing the world around at that point. Because if you, if you understand and done your, your research and history, you would know that the 2008 uh, crash, basically the United States exit scammed the world. That's like the best way to put it. And since then, the DXY has been increasing. So it's, if you look at it from this perspective, it really does look like we're going to probably continue up to here. It really does. But if you look at it closer, yeah, it does look like a potentially triple top. Um, so I'm leaning towards maybe most likely we'll get a run up to here. 
and then I'll question it. But if we get a run up to here and they keep the hawkish Fed policy, the world's going to crumble, man. Like people don't get it, but like it's going to be bad. Um, it's going to be really bad. Uh, it, like, I don't think I, people remember uh, Federal Reserve uh, policy right around uh, 2020, which was like right here um, when we had the big Black Swan event. I don't want to say it for censorship reasons on your channel, but the big Black Swan event where everybody's wearing masks, right? Everybody remembers that. When that happened, they were panicking. I don't think people remember, but they were panicking. They pulled out like an emergency policy called liquidity, uh, liquidity swaps, which if you understand what liquidity swaps are, they basically gave uh, foreign exchange governments or other parts of the world, they gave them free money. They just get, they said, hey, you know, like, I don't know why I'm going to give it to you, but I'm just going to give you free USD just for the, the purpose of you might invest in our economy. That's what they were doing just to try to save and stimulate the economy. So if we do make a run up here, what I'm trying to say is that the world's going to crumble. And if the world keeps crumbling, there's going to be likely a big external or internal conflict. There's going to be a war or a revolution or something because the conditions of life is going to get really bad. It's going to get really bad. There's going to be supply chain issues. People are going to lose jobs. You know, so it's, it's very hard to think of a world that we do come up here and it does get crazy because I think the Federal Reserve will have no choice but to start printing and get crazy and frantic same, same way they did over here. Um, so that's probably a lot for people. And, um, you know, I just wanted to kind of show that. But yeah, I mean, I just think that, yeah, it, the hawkish Fed policy can keep going. They can keep uh, getting people into the dollar. But like, man, I, I don't know how long they can take it is what I'm saying. The economy is kind of uh, skittish right now. Yeah, I mean, people definitely don't want to buy the risk on assets such as Bitcoin and like like some stocks. Um, yeah, it's going to be very interesting to see if it does continue to keep going um, or if they end up having to print dollars and it goes down. Um, and I definitely could see like the whole war thing I saw um, somewhere over in Africa. Now it's the second country to uh, like adopt Bitcoin as its currency. I'm just like, oh, wait, waiting for a war to break out in Africa, you know, breaking news. Because, um, I mean, that's how they control us with the, like the fiat currency. The only on the flip side, like I guess the flip side argument I've, I've heard, uh, I, think, I think Max Kaiser said this or it was somebody else said basically every other currency, they're, they're, like they're taking their fiat currencies, they're dumping into the US dollar. So that like that's why it's pumping. But eventually, it's, like, like we all know the US dollar is the, it's the best of the worst case scenario. So eventually it's still going to crumble. Um, it's just a matter of time. We just don't know. Well, yeah, it's like uh, uh, so how the economy works is when when the Federal Reserve like decides not to print other countries suffer really bad. And when they suffer, the only way they can keep up with uh, the world is buying USD, like exactly what you just said. So when they're suffering and their current like their uh, country's currency goes into like hyperinflation and they're going through like all these tough times, like families will buy cash, US dollars to just kind of offset that. And, and it's like a defensive move, like they're buying cash. So you see the DXY going up, but it's kind of like this pulling and tugging because as uh, they're buying cash, they're suffering. And now you see countries having to adopt Bitcoin for that reason. So like, it's like a, the Federal Reserve, I think they're screwed. Like if their, their goal is to try to stop crypto, they're done, they're done for. Because even if they dump the price of Bitcoin, by decreasing spending, they're increasing the adoption of crypto. And then if they, you know, let crypto ride in price, well, then everybody's getting rich. So it's like the, a lose-lose scenario for the Federal Reserve. No matter what move they take, it will be positive for crypto in the long run. Um, so yeah, I agree with uh, Max Kaiser or whoever, you, yeah, and it, it, what you were just saying. So that was interesting. Yeah, yeah, it definitely is. It's just it's just a matter of time because they've been like they've done such a great job. I mean, will they somehow create some kind of event and we go to an e-cash? Then they basically change the tokenomics of USD and then it just changes everything. I mean, it's all these scenarios that I guess could happen. Um, because basically it's it, I guess at the end of the day, I guess we could call it like tokenomics with the US dollars. They change it in 72. So yeah, it's like it's only it a matter happen. of time. It could happen, but I also think it's gonna be scary. Like uh, I was talking to Will, one of our coaches in, in fundamental secrets, and he said that he thinks they're going to run the dollar up off the cliff. Like they're just going to like run it and destroy economies and then boom, come in with a, uh, um, a digital currency and then like save everybody and then change the tokenomics. Kind of like what you said, like they're going to like destroy all economies and then come with a digital currency. Like, Hey, if you adopt this, you'll be good. You know, and you, you don't have to worry about food. And like, I don't know, like that, that, that's it's conspiracy theories at this point. I don't think anyone knows, but yeah. it's cool. It's cool to speculate and to be in the market and kind of, and the reason why I say this, we should be speculating. I know there's a lot of people probably watching this and maybe some of your viewers are, are down because, you know, that's how my channel is. Everybody's losing money, so they don't want to watch the videos and stuff. 
But I do want to briefly show you something because although it does look a little bit bad, if you zoom out a little bit, and I know everybody's, it's like corny at this point, but you know, you have to do it. You have to look at the long run because this is most likely going to get you the money. So if you look at the having these, these blue lines are the havings, right? Right here is a projected having for 2024. Now, if we look at other havings, we start to see the bottom approximately 500 days before the having. Look, 500 days here. If there was no, if this didn't happen, this what we wouldn't have dumped. But even this is lower. So it started bottoming out 500 days before this having. If we scroll back, it started bottoming out 500 days before this having. So if we look at it from that perspective, we should see a bottoming out if Bitcoin comes down. When August 2022? Is that scary? Like, is that really that scary? Can we take maybe another 15% down Bitcoin, let it ride, and then wait for August, September of 2022, and then the market starts to, to flip and I'm buying the bottom? Like, I think everybody can, can do that. I think like, you know, people need to take a little a deep breath and recognize it for what it is. Like, you could be all hype at the top, but that's not where millionaires are made. That's not how you, you get rich. I mean, I know you told me a story about how you got made a lot of money. Did you, was it in the bear run or the bull run? Oh, bear run, of course. Yeah. Yeah. It's the same story with me. Like I, I got rich in the bear run. The first time was in when I was broke and I had like six grand in my name and I bought Ethereum at three to $7. That was in the bear run. And then I got rich. Right. And then the second time Bitcoin dumps, uh, uh, with uh, the Black Swan event in 2022, I'm buying Bitcoin like crazy. Like that's when I made the most money and people don't understand that. That's where these hundred X's come from, is from the bear run. So I just want to kind of like tell your followers so that they don't feel so down. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but I mean, it, it is insane how I've noticed the views on YouTube. Like it's not just my channel. It's not just your channel. It's everything across the board. They've dubbed crazy. And it's uh, it, it just amazes me because then they'll be here. Like I, I made a live stream of Shiba Inu when it was at the all-time high. I said, guys, you should probably sell. The risk reward is terrible. And there was like 500 people there. I had the record high dislikes. I, I thought it was funny. It's back when you could see dislikes. I had my record high. I was like, you guys are insane right now. But uh, <laughs> but then like, lo like looking back, there's so many people that message and said, hey, I'm glad you pointed this out. Because when they would search on YouTube, hey, you know, buy Shiba Inu. I, my title was sell Shiba Inu. They're like, wait, why is this guy saying sell? And it saves some people, but of course, some people still bought the top. But uh, it, it, the whole psychology thing of it, of how humans work, I find it very fascinating because yeah. right now we're entering a time. I mean, even DCA right now would be a great thing. Yeah, um, it's you got to flip the script. You got to like think different from people. I think it's kind of a signal. Like when I see that, it's like you were right, bro. Like the more it looked like you're wrong to the general public, the more right in my eyes you are. So like right now I'm screaming bullish. And then you see all like the YouTuber, like I think BitBoy is pretty bearish and some other people are pretty bearish. And I'm like, yo, like what's going on? Like, so let's take advantage. And I think like, that's the energy people got to have. Like eventually you got to exit the system. You can't just follow everybody blindly. You can't be a robot. Like I, I, I go in public and I look at people and it's like, everyone has the same motivations. They're doing the same thing. They're probably on Instagram or TikTok, like literally on their phone walking. Like everybody's in the same boat. Eventually, you got to take, take control of your life, right? And so for me, that's in crypto. I do the exact opposite of what retail is doing. So yeah, you're right. Like when Shiba Inu took off, I actually made like 100K off Shiba Inu. I made a lot of money, but I was buying it when no one was talking about it. And then when it came out and it got launched on exchanges, I was like, oh, I got to get out. Like this is the time <laughs> to get out, right? And thinking like that is what got you in your position and what got me in my position. So, you know, it's yeah. good that to see that, you know, there's at least some followers that are watching these videos and, and, and benefiting from it. You know what I mean? Oh yeah. And I think the ones that are watching now, they're going to do well because they, they see like bearish is actually a bullish name and, and bullish is actually a bearish name. If you think of it like that, you should yeah. be selling like the bull and, and buying the bear. Cause like it, if you say, Oh, I'm bearish right now, it, it has like a negative sound to it. Like people take it in a bad way, but I don't know about you. I mean, I think it's a bullish thing. Um, it's how, it's yeah, what I do is it. I just keep I keep calling it bullish, but then I'll say something like, "Hey, like, yeah, we'll probably come down fifteen percent, but that's bullish." Yeah. That, that's yeah. you know, I, you, just <laughs> yeah. can't, you just gotta submit to their bias sometimes. Like people just don't understand, but yeah, it's not negative, yeah. guys. We're all trying to make money. That's that's the goal here, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course, yeah. I'm like I'm not sure if you look at the Gaussian channel or if you check out the three day death like de uh, death cross. Uh, I, I saw a little bit on that. If you if you want to pull it up, you can you know yeah, here. Let me pull that up. Yeah. Um, because I find it fascinating how in 2018, when we dumped, um, you're just putting the right settings up. We dumped. They both happened at the same exact time. Uh, are you talking about the two, uh, two day, 200 day moving average? I think. Uh, yes. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. With, um, here, 
can you guys see that yeah i see it yeah so this right here's the gaussian channel and oh yeah, um, yeah. It, it's very fascinating how um i, I just noticed, like like notice this pattern back here in 2018 we we played on the bottom of the gaussian channel about uh, five, uh 150 days and it, what's interesting with this it, it, like if you go on like on the blx and go back to the beginning of time anytime we enter the gaussian channel we always fall through the bottom except for one time in history and that was july 2021 we usually uh, fall, fall through the bottom and and this is when i get super bullish because i'm buying and then it, it goes back up but we we this was an outlier um but what's fascinating though we're having the same riding the bottom of the gaussian channel right now just like just like we did in 2018 and then if i pull up um like the same time this broke which was november 12 2018 if i pull up the three day death cross i'll go to three day that's with the 50 and the 200 um you guys can see it broke down the same time in 2018 and we can also see i don't have a bunch of weird drawings on my chart for some reason um but you can also see we're about to get that cross coming up possibly in may it really depends if we keep going down faster it starts pumping it'll take longer but it's gonna happen um i i just find that fascinating because it's like throughout history it's about a 40 to like a 50 percent dump on average if it would happen yeah yeah i mean yeah that's uh, it's, it's clear yeah death cross is pretty consistent from what i've noticed so yeah yeah super and, interesting yeah i mean and it seems like on the three day it's more uh, like it's more significant than the one day because we have a lot of fake outs on like on the one day um but, but yeah, it's just something I, I thought was fascinating. Not, like not saying it's a hundred percent guaranteed. It still could actually start pumping and we could go to hundred K tomorrow, but uh, just thought. Yeah. Like, Bitcoin's cool. weird. Yeah. Bitcoin's weird. Like it, it has a mind of its own sometimes, but yeah I, yeah, I trust like data. So like, yeah, data, federal reserve, pretty much everything speaking a little bear run. Um, but I showed you guys like, you know, August, uh, September, 2022, we could potentially see a bottom and, you know, it, is great accumulation zone and you can learn a lot um while everybody's exiting crypto this is your opportunity to become more educated and you, some people are even building businesses like i built my business uh and i think this is a great opportunity for me to like really expand it uh before the next cycle if you know what i mean yeah oh, oh yeah yeah because like what like when things starts like taking off that's when new people are coming and that's when we're gonna get that next wave of adoption it's not right now like right now it's boring you know pe like people don't, don't care um, they, they don't get that, uh, I guess the dopamine or serotonin rush, like, you know? Yeah. It's a, to me, it's like a really bullish bear market. I'm going to be honest. Like it, it is boring, but if you compare it to the last cycle, like there's still a lot of interest. I think there, there's a lot yeah. of people, maybe if we get that last, like little, uh, 40, 50% drop, then it would probably shake everybody out and everybody <laughs> get super pissed off. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. If you, yeah. If you see us break the, the lows in what was that July, yeah, around 28 K like, if we break that, I think people are going to be scared. I mean, but some people are going to be so bullish. Like that's when that like, but that's when the money's made. Um, simple as that. Like, I agree, man. All, all, yeah, all those metaverse coins. I think picking those up when we yeah. shatter, because they'll probably drop 60, 80 percent more, and then it's a great bond opportunity. Yeah, I agree. Um, I I can't wait, honestly, because like if you if you did your due diligence this cycle, you know what's going to work next cycle. Like the metaverse coins, um, certain NFTs. I hope NFTs go to zero so I can buy them. <laughs> To be honest, yeah. like I really do, because I'm not buying e-liquid assets at the top. I'm sorry, because you can't sell yeah. them quick. Uh, but I'll buy an e-liquid asset if Board Ape Yacht Club comes down to like one, two ETH per. Uh, it probably won't, but you get what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, of course, yeah. Yeah, so yeah, I'm just I'm scooping it up. We know it works, right? DeFi, um, layer ones, um, NFTs, but it depends on what type of NFT. And then of course, metaverse plays, play to earn plays, right? These things like we know are gonna come back, and they will die for real, like. Um, yeah, they're going to die. Like, you just got to pick, you got to make sure you pick the winners because there's a lot last cycle that didn't come back. So as long as you make sure you pick the winners, like that's where we get our 100 X's for sure. Oh, yeah. um, and I think they're going to be a little layer two next cycle too. It might be way more aggressive. This type of we this cycle, we did get some layer two moves, but I think with Vitalik Buterin pushing everybody to layer two and, um, and, and you know, Cardano with, with, their, with their layer two coming out, I think it's going to be a big push towards that. That might be a big confirmed trend. So I might scoop up some of that, like maybe some optimism or something. I don't know. It's hard to tell. Yeah, you just don't know like until it happens. I I know last cycle I took the VC approach. I call it the shotgun approach. I just took a little bit of bucks, put in a lot of stuff. Some went to zero, and the ones that made it, they did very well. So, um, but I, yeah, that's you know. the name of the game, man. Risk management. Yeah. Risk management. Yeah, yeah. So, so like, so what's something right now you're doing to you know hedge your bets for for the next cycle or you know 
Yeah. So uh, first cycle, I was really like an analyst mostly. I am an analyst still, of course, but I think it's it's productive to build in crypto. Um, so yeah, I, I'm doing a couple of things. So I'm building a data aggregator. Um, so if you guys didn't know, I, I'm, I'm the owner of uh, coinpix.io. It's basically just a coin market cap competitor. Um, and it, I think, has a little bit of advantages. And the, and the way I say, reason I say that is because Coin Market Cap and Coin Gecko, they have um, they have like interest uh, that they push on their website. So you know, you look at these websites and they have a whole list of coins, and you think it's unbiased, but really it's not. They're pushing their coins that they want, really. Um, so this is kind of like BS. Um, and you know, I just want to be able to spread crypto very easy. So what we did on our website is we put in uh, fundamental analysis grades. So I have a research team. We dove into a lot of projects. Um, and we kind of scored it based off of qualitative elements that you, you wouldn't be able to find anywhere else because it's qualitative. It's kind of like we rated like CEO versus CEO. Um, there's like no number you could put to that. Um, so it's kind of just a different approach to things, if that makes sense. Uh, so yeah, we're growing it steady. I'm not, uh, there's no way for me to make money on it. I spent a half a million dollars building it. And there's no way to me, like I'm doing it just literally for uh, the general good of crypto. So I can like give people an answer really, really quickly. So um, let me just uh, show you what I'm talking about here. Just pull up. Uh, so yeah, it's called coinpix.io. It's powered by Anora. Anora. Anora is like our machine learning neural network. Um, so you can see that there's fundamental grades. And then um, you can actually look into the grade. I'm not logged in, but if you click view full coin page, I, I don't want to show my stuff too much. But if you click view full coin page, we have reports written out. And they're not just like regular reports that you see on like a website for SEO. They're like real well thought out reports. I pay people a lot of money for this. Some people that work at hedge funds are doing this fundamental analysis. So you can see the grades for a lot of coins. And if, if we didn't grade it yet, there's an NA uh, and we're getting around to it. Um, but I just thought it was a really cool tool where you get all the same features of CoinMarketCap, but it's unbiased. If you notice, there's no ads, right? There's no ads, there's no shilling of anything. And it's just simply our unbiased research. Um, so I've been working on that. And then what I've also been working on is our education program. I'm sure you guys have seen it before um, where I'm just doing coaching. Uh, we also have a trial, $5, $5 for five days. We do our coin calls, everything, like all of this research, all the principles that I've been making um, uh, into this research that I've taught these uh, guys how to do fundamental analysis. All of that is in the course. So like they kind of graduated from my course. And then, you know, we built this research team that's, that's providing the fundamental analysis from uh, for, for the website. And then also something else, I don't even think you know this, uh, but you, you know, you ever heard of Zach XBT? No. It's just that guy that calls everybody out on Twitter for like rug pulls and scams. Oh yeah. I I've seen him. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. like he's, he's getting a lot of followers and a lot, there's a lot of interest in him because he's calling all the BS, but really I think what's happening with him and CoffeeZilla is he's exposing the industry to a new thing called on-chain investigation. So, you know, they're, they're siphoning through these transactions and they're uncovering things like, you know, guys, it's a blockchain. You can't hide anything. Everything's on the blockchain. So they have these tools and nobody knows these tools. And I've actually reached out to Zach XBT and I was like, Hey man, like, I love what you're doing. You're calling out BS projects, but why don't you show people how to do it? Um, and it requires a little bit of Python knowledge. Um, but that's what we're developing. I'm developing two different areas. You ever heard of Benjamin Cohen? Yeah. You know, so like, so if you notice like the biggest people respect, like Willy Wu, Plan B, Benjamin, they make their own charts. They make it from scratch, actually. Yeah. They're not using TradingView. So what I've noticed is if you want to uh, level up, these things I know, I do it myself. I do on-chain investigation. I create my own logarithmic regression charts and, and some different data science, tech, data science techniques for coins. And it's just hard to do. And no one's really taught it yet. There's guys that do it that everybody watches, but no one has taught people how to do it. So uh, we're actually dropping FS 2.0, and it's going to have these things like on-chain investigation, um, you know, market maker uh, skill sets, as well as, uh, you know, learning how to create your own data science charts from scratch. I'm saying, you know, you actually buy the data, import it, and actually make and understand the math behind these charts. And I think that's like taking the trader to the next level. Um, so yeah, that's what we're doing is, is like, I, I, you know, I'm following the path of all the professional. I've been in crypto for six years. These guys have been in traditional finance probably for 15, 20 years. So they are way ahead of me, of course. But as I'm following the path, 
I, I don't want to leave people in the dark and just hold all the gems to myself. I want to educate people along the way so they can follow it with me. And that's basically what we're doing there. So you might see some data science uh, on-chain metric charts on the, you know, coinpix.io. Um, 100% free. Again, like I don't make money for that. And then if you want to learn how to do it, well, there's always an option for you there, if that makes sense. Sweet. Yeah. And I think that kind of brings up uh, the biggest thing with Michael Saylor, you know, like crypto is transparent. We have the blockchain. So I, I, I've been trying to, I'm not sure if you know his official address. I've been trying to find the MicroStrategy um, Bitcoin address. I saw the that whale guy put it out, but I, I, I don't know if it's true. I'm trying to verify it. I would think that it should be public knowledge though. Yeah, I think uh, the whale guy put that. I saw that. I know what you're talking about. And then he, um, I think Mike, um, Michael Saylor said that it wasn't his public address. I think. Don't quote me on that. Yeah. But yeah see, that's the beauty of on-chain investigation. We can look at ourselves. We can just be like, okay, yeah. is, is it real or not? Um, so yeah, I agree. I think it's a really cool tool for people to have. And it's not that hard. No. It's not that hard, especially if you understand blockchain. Uh, but it's like these certain tools you need to have uh, and utilize them so it can make it easy. Because if you try to filter out the, the transactions like manually, it's like there's millions of transactions. So you got to yeah. find a way to come to like like these uh, kind of points where it's like a clue. It's like a clue on the blockchain. And then you can you can really track out their transaction path. And then once you see their transaction path, it opens up more clues. And then you can see where the money goes, basically. It's kind of cool, man. I think it's cool. I think it's underutilized. Imagine... If you can watch what Elon Musk buys on Amazon for his book purchases, like these things, like imagine if you could like, and that's, a, that's another reason um, I put out my public address to the public. It's like, I, I have my public address. This is scary for a lot of YouTubers. They don't do this. Uh, I put out my entire public address on my YouTube channel. You can find it. You can literally look at every trade I've ever made in my, in the history of my whole career. So there's, there's a, there's a thing going on where people don't show their P and L's and stuff. They don't show how much they're ma making or losing. And like with the blockchain, if you give your public address, there's nothing no one can say like yeah. there's nothing no one can say so you know i think it's i personally i like transparency this is why i made my youtube channel this is why i come out here and i just give my life away and tell people what i'm doing because if if you're transparent then it holds you accountable to the public right but if you're hiding if you're an anonymous figure which there's a lot in crypto you have no credibility on the line you could say whatever you want and there is no repercussions to that i am the opposite I think you should put all of your credibility online and just be an outstanding human and try to grow. And even if you make mistakes, and there's so many videos I've made where I just kind of show everybody how much money I lost and all these mistakes I made and these fails, failed businesses, that makes you stronger because you know your audience can really say, hey, look, you know, this guy's real. You know, he's not like a, a, a figment of my imagination where every action they take makes money. It's not real. Like people lose money, man. Like that, that's just the way it goes, right? So I think bringing it back home, I think a blockchain investigation. Public address should be common for everybody. Everybody should give their public address out because um, you can't get hacked giving your public address out. Like, yeah, you, you can get docs, but you can't get hacked um, as long as you have good computer literacy and you're not an idiot and click random links. Right. But <laughs> um, but yeah, I think it should be a common standard between all YouTubers and all influencers. Give your public address out. I went to Zach XPT. I was like, bro, here's my public address. Expose me. <laughs> like, just, just go. Like if people did that, we wouldn't have a problem seeing who's credible, who's not credible, who's rug pulling, who's not rug pulling. If we did that, then we can we can isolate the scammers and then like get them out of the community. Like you get what I'm saying? So yeah. I, I not only am I gonna give my public address out, I'm gonna educate my audience on how to look at my public address so they can really see everything that's going on. Um, and and then if I suck, then I should tell people I suck. If I'm good, then I should tell people I'm good and grow and become better and read more books and learn technical analysis and learn really how to trade and, and make more money. If I can't do that, why am I on YouTube telling people what to do? You get what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, so yeah. It's just transparency, I think, is a good thing. But yeah, go ahead. Well, yeah, I mean, it, but I guess like anybody can have like, like, like somebody could put out their, like their public addresses and then they could have some that aren't public and, and they could still be dumping them. So it, I agree. I agree. But, but it's a step in the right direction. There's nothing. Well, yeah. Well, yeah. There's yeah, nothing course. perfect. Like there's always going to be ways to trick. Yeah. There's always like with everything in life, you know what I mean? But yeah. at least it's a step in the right direction. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, I think it's just interesting that we can see pr people's purchase decisions. You know what I mean? Don't, don't, oh, yeah. don't what's the common saying? Don't uh, do what I say, watch what I do. Yeah. It's like, the, it's the perfect representation of that. So yeah, I'm, I'm excited. Yeah. I would just love to see if sailor with micro strategy is actually being honest when he's tweeting or if he's lying. I, I just want to see like he doesn't even what, tweet, bro. 
You know that, right? Well, like, yeah, it's somebody else. Yeah, yeah. there's no yeah, way you're sitting there tweeting. Like, I'm sorry. Like, I don't. Th- it's not happening. Like, I yeah. think the only guy that really tweets probably Elon Musk. Like, he, he looks like <laughs> he looks like he's having fun with it. You know what I mean? But yeah, he, yeah. <laughs> Michael, he... Michael Saylor is just like pro Bitcoin stuff every three seconds. Like, it's yeah. just it's kind of like at this point, like branding. There's definitely a PR manager handling that or something. But yeah. yeah. Yeah, I would just like to clarify and see what like what's real, what's not. Because like in crypto, the cool thing is we can do that. It's like you said with the on chain data tools, like you can do that. It's not that we have to trust. Like you know, it's it's the same. Don't trust, but like verify. So it's pretty cool. I agree. Um, and also, newsflash: if you learn how to use the blockchain, your trading becomes better. <laughs> like, <laughs> like people don't get this, but it's like uh, they got their whole net worth in crypto, but they don't know what a block explorer is. Like what? Like, That's crazy. What? That it's true though it's true and then maybe they might know what a block explorer is but they don't know what a transaction hash is it's like what it's like you don't yeah. know how the, the system works like you should know this you should definitely know this yeah it it, it reminds me i, I live near um, like amish and mennonite and uh, they're actually the mennonite are getting into it but they're taking security like terrible they, they have exodius but like 400k on their wallet on their desktop with the private key right next to it like and on the desktop it's like you guys are gonna get hacked or something but it, but it, it, like just going to show they have like no clue what Block Explorer is. They have no clue what anything is. Um, but they're getting into it, so that's pretty cool. Yeah, I, actually, I had a conversation last night with some people. Like, there's a lot of people in this industry that that bit off way too much. Like, bring it back to what you're saying. Like, there's a lot of people drop NFTs, made twenty million dollars, way more than I did. They don't know nothing. They don't know how to, like you said, store a private key the right way. Um, and a lot of them are getting exposed and you see, uh, 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 coffeezilla just destroying safe moon. These oh, guys, yeah. w- when it comes to qual- uh, credibility, they're like at the lowest of the low spectrum. Basically these guys have like, they, they have no idea what they're doing and they launched a product and made like freaking $1 billion market cap. Like it's ridiculous. It's ridiculous, but that's what the bear markets are for. That's why I, I'm actually thankful for the bear market because we're just weeding out all of the sketchy people get the heck out. You, your business model was not profitable <laughs> and you were scamming people. Like we need the price to come down to destroy all of these people. And the ones that were really serious will stay and, and, and they will flourish again next. Like that's where the innovation that people call it a pump and dump. They call it like this volatility really scary, but it's like that 90% drop is what we need for innovation. That's what we need to build the next cycle. How do you think these play to earn games and this metaverse token is going to do well? How do you think they're going to build? we need this time period it's like a winter like you need winter like you just need it uh for summer to be good you know what i mean so it's just a time period in crypto and i I hope all the scammers go to zero to be honest yeah but i've said before i still believe you can make more money scamming people in crypto than than helping people because it's so easy it's so easy to take advantage oh here you need help with your private key oh i can help you it's so easy to do that you know Um, i mean i'm not saying it's ethical i'm not saying it's right i'm just saying that it's what they do it's true man I, when i when i was trying to make a business in crypto i had choices to make i could have i could have dropped a coin i could have dropped a coin like I, I had choices you're right i didn't make my business model to make the most money i made it to help the most people um so like short term i agree with you short term in these cycles it is much more lucrative to be a scammer um but i think over 20 30 years it's much more lucrative to do the right thing oh, yeah. and, and and all of them will get weeded out Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, and like I know, the, like the like the governments around the world are getting more on chain forensics, um, and they're gonna. I mean, they're gonna prosecute people. It's just yeah. o- only a matter of time. So yeah, I agree, man. That's why I give out my public address. Like, hit me, <laughs> hit me. I got nothing to hide. Yeah. Let me know if I do have something to hide. Let me know now before the government gets me. You know what I mean? <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. It's not worth it. Um, yeah, I mean, so it was glad to hear what your thoughts were for the market and what you plan on doing. Thank, like, thanks for the time for coming on, man. Um, I'll, I'll catch you later. Any last words? Nah, man. Uh, the gist of it with me, man, is just like, just, just weather the storm. If you could weather the storm, I promise there's light at the end of the tunnel. And this is where rich people are made. It's that simple. And you're on the same boat as me. And I'm glad I can connect with you guys. I appreciate you for having me on your channel. And let me know if you guys have any comments or questions. My, my YouTube channel is just Alexander Lorenzo. Um, I've been building my Twitter. I don't know if you've been attacking it. Elon Musk is making me feel comfortable with the the censorship resistance. So follow me on Twitter, Alex on crypto. I've been really aggressive on there and, you know, maybe we could all learn together or whatever the case is. Yeah. Oh yeah. 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 Twitter's become a, a, a little bit be- like a better place now. <laughs> yeah. So for sure. it's for pretty sure. cool. Awesome. Yeah. Well, thank you. And I'll catch you later. All right, guys.